Welcome to Fayette County Public Library Story Time. Our first story today is Penguin Cha Cha. It's going to be a fun story. Julia was wild about everything at the romping, chomping park and zoo, especially the shows. Every weekend, she shimmied up a tall tree and watched the performance. One Saturday, dances moved and grooved, whirled and twirled, hip-hop and boogie-booped. <laughs> Boogie-bopped. Maybe boogie-bopped. When a dancer tossed her feather boa backstage, Julia noticed a sneaky flipper snatch in, and snatched it in mid-air. Penguins pounced on hats and clothes, fans and bows. Just what are those fishy penguins up to? Julia wondered. So, Julia followed the penguins as they waddled and toddled away. You see all the little penguins there in a the line. When she got to the penguin cove, she peeked inside. The penguins stared back at her. Julia saw no hats, no clothes, no fans, no bows. Just what are those fishy penguins up to, Julia wondered. <laughs> so Julia spied on the penguins from way up high. Were they moving and grooving, whirling and twirling, hip-hopping and boogie-bopping? Yes, the penguins were dancing. And now you can see down inside of that cove where the penguins went. There's ice and some water. Look at that. Don't they look like they're having fun? Do you like to play in the snow and ice? Penguins sure do. <laughs> She couldn't believe it. She had to tell someone, dancing penguins, you say. Nonsense, said the zookeeper. Penguins can't hip and hop and boogie and bop. Why don't you go and take another look-see? Julia grabbed a top hat and ran to join the jazzy jitterbug. She bounded into the penguin cove and shouted, Let's dance! The penguins didn't flap a flipper. They didn't shake a tail feather. They froze like penguin popsicles. Oh dear. But when no one was around, the penguins were having a toe-tapping, knee-knocking, rocking good time. Julia hatched a plan. Now look what she's doing. Look at her. What do you think she's doing there? she would turn herself into a penguin. When the zookeeper saw Julia, he said, Hey, what are you doing out here, little penguin? You belong in the cove. Hmm, she fooled the zookeeper. Julia wiggled and wobbled into the penguin cove. The penguin stared and glared but still wouldn't share a dance. I know what I need, Julia decided. A dance partner. Hippo agreed to play the part. Wonder what those penguins will do with the hippo there. <laughs> Julia and Hippo tangoed and fandangled, bustled, and bustled and wove all over the cove. Still, the penguins didn't budge. All standing there, just like popsicles. <laughs> oh, the hippo's having fun in the water. Look, he's gonna have some lettuce. Ooh, watermelon. Julia trudged home. Look at her. Doesn't she just look really defeated and sad?
Yep, turn the page. The next day, Julia returned for one last try. Okay, I know you won't let me join your jitterbug, Julia said to the penguins. But may I please show you the cha-cha? Step, step, cha-cha-cha. Step, step, cha-cha-cha. <laughs> Julia clapped, cha-cha-cha. Julia snapped, cha-cha-cha. Julia swung, cha-cha-cha. Julia spun, cha-cha-cha. And suddenly she heard tap. Flap, cha cha cha. Tap, flap, cha cha cha. Uh oh, the penguins are getting in on it. Look at that. The penguins just couldn't resist. Tap, flap, cha cha cha. They danced with Julia all day long. And look, doesn't she look happy now? From then on, Julia always kept her penguin costume handy. Whenever the zookeeper checked on them, all he saw was a group of penguins, frozen like penguin popsicles. <laughs> there she stands, right in the middle. The next Saturday at the magic show, Julia noticed sneaky little paws swiped the magician's hat and wand. Now what are those tricky monkeys up to, she wondered. <laughs> oh, she's already up in a tree. <laughs> okay. Well, that was a fun story. What do you have over there, Miss Lisa? Well, I have another penguin book for us. This is Penguin's Hidden Talent. So if you take a look at the cover, we have bear who's juggling. It looks like rabbit's doing magic. Not sure what this guy's doing or what this one's doing. But look at Penguin. He has a talent. We have to figure out what it is. The big annual talent show was just around the corner. Looks like Little Pig just put a sign up on the tree. And everyone was practicing. So oh, now I know what that fox was doing. He's burping <laughs> really loud. I bet some of you have that as a talent. Look at Bear, he's juggling. I'm still not sure what this is. Maybe he's made that model fish. And he's doing, ta-da! He's doing magic. Looks like he's pulling himself up out of the hat. <laughs> Everyone except Penguin. Penguin couldn't figure out what his talent was. Look at him sitting in the chair. His little thought bubble is empty. What do you think Penguin should do? Well, he knew it wasn't baking. Messy kitchen up there. It wasn't map reading. Look at all the little footprints. He's been lost in the woods. And it wasn't knitting. <laughs> Looks like he's got himself all tangled up in the lamp. <laughs> Albatross wanted to help Penguin find his talent. Have you ever tried swallowing a whole marlin? He asked. Too big. Can you imagine swallowing a fish that size? He brought him a smaller one. He says, it's still too big. Now look what he brought him. He says, perfect. But Penguin could only swallow a sardine. Bear also wanted to help. Have you ever tried juggling appliances? He asked. See, now there's a toaster up in the tree. <laughs> but Penguin only managed to break a blender and get a toaster stuck up in a tree. I guess all these parts down here is a blender. Poor Penguin, what's he going to do? Have you ever tried doing magic tricks? asked Rabbit. But though Penguin made Rabbit's watch disappear, he couldn't bring it back again. Huh, where did the watch go? He's looking everywhere. It's gone. 
Have you ever tried burping the alphabet? <laughs> Ask Fox. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. But all Penguin could do was hiccup. <laughs> Poor Penguin. Don't worry about me, said Penguin. I'll just help organize the talent show. That way I can still be involved, even though I don't have a talent. Look at him. He looks sad. Just like Julia in Miss Kim's book. She was sad for a while. Do you think the friends are going to help him out? So while his friends practiced, Penguin drew some posters, made some phone calls, sent some emails, and polished the trophy. That's a pretty good job to do, right? Finally, the big day arrived. Talent show entrance, here they all come. The opening ceremony was terrific. There's Penguin right there in the spotlight saying, welcome. Looks like he had some airplanes fly over. There were fireworks and jets and lots of great music. And then a guest speaker spoke. Looks like the king says, you have to believe in yourself. Is that the king of Norway? Ooh, yeah, I believe it is, said Bear. And then there was a famous band that played. <laughs> Look at the band's name. The Jolly Llamas. <laughs> He's singing Ice Ice Baby. Everybody's dancing. This is groovy, they're saying. Then the talent show started. Albatross, Fox, Bear and Rabbit all did exceptionally well. Oh, look, there's a goat. Looks like he's blowing balloons. Ant Eater is multiplying. This one's, remember the fox? Looks like he's burping the rabbit away. <laughs> Got this guy doing the yo yo. Look at all this talent. He's rolling on the big drum there and he's playing, juggling. Shooting the apple off the mouse's head. That's a lot of talent these animals have. But what about Penguin? What's his talent? Oh, here's the judges. The judges took forever to count up the points, but eventually they came to a decision. This year's winner of the talent show is Bear. With medals of excellence going to Albatross, Fox, and Rabbit. There he goes, he gets the polished trophy, doesn't he? Everyone celebrated, but not Penguin. After all, he didn't even have a medal. And he walks slowly home through the snow. Look, and it's even raining at his house. <laughs> He's so sad. Bear, Albatross, Fox, and Rabbit were very worried about Penguin. They tried to think of a way to cheer him up. So what's Bear thinking about? Sushi recipes? He's thinking about hot chocolate? Fox is thinking about giving him some new socks, maybe? I know, said Rabbit. Let's throw Penguin a party to thank him for organizing the talent show. Everyone agreed that was a very good idea. And they worked late into the night to organize a great party. The next morning when Penguin came outside for the newspaper, he found that his friends had thrown him a party. But it wasn't a very good one. Look. Thanks, Penguin. <laughs> they misspelled things. They got this bird trying to sing. Albatross had made a tattered banner that said, Thanks, Penguin. The only music that Rabbit could organize was a singing canary. Fox brought his grandma as the guest speaker. <laughs> There's grandma. And I'll tell you another thing about sandwiches, she says. And Bear brought an old loaf of bread with a bite in it instead of a cake. At least he's got a party hat on. If only you had organized this party, Penguin, said Rabbit. 
Then it wouldn't be so terrible. And just then, Penguin realized the talent he really was. I don't need a medal. I need a telephone. What's his talent? Has he figured it out? Hello, I would like to order. What's he ordering? Can you guess? What a great party! What a great talent! So what did he order? Looks like he ordered an ice cream stand and so ordered some planes to fly over and a big banner for himself, an elephant to ride on. He ordered, what else did he order here? A Ferris wheel? A big cake for himself? And then it says, Penguin Party Planner. Call loudly. <laughs> so Penguin realized that his talent is organizing. And you probably know somebody in your life that's a good organizer. And it's a great talent. And that was Penguin's. So we've read two books that start or that talk about penguins. Now, boys and girls, Penguin starts with the letter P. I'm sure most of you know what a P looks like, but I'm going to stick it right up here in the middle of our board. This is a capital P, and this is what Penguin starts with. And so I've got some pictures that starts with P, too. And I want to see if you can say what the picture is and see if you go P at the beginning, because you should, because they all start with P. Now, here's what our books were all about. They were about... Can you say it? Penguin. That's right, boys and girls. Penguin starts with P. All right, let's try another one. This is my favorite food. Well, maybe second, because chocolate's really my favorite. <laughs> I bet this is your favorite food. Can you tell me what that is? Pizza. Yep, and it starts with P. Oh, when you go and watch a movie, which we haven't done that recently, but when we do watch a movie, what do you like to order? How about some popcorn? Do you hear the p, p at the beginning for popcorn? What about this picture? This is something I like to do at home, maybe while watching TV or just having something fun to do on a Saturday. Puzzles. Put together a puzzle. What about this picture, boys and girls? Do you recognize what this is? It's a pillow. Yep. Pillows are nice and snuggly, aren't they? Oh, here's something that was in Miss Kim's book. Do you know what this is? <laughs> what did those penguins do when the zookeeper was watching? They froze just like a popsicle. Yep, you got it. Popsicle. Which is your favorite? Out of these flavors, I would pick orange. Mm -hmm. Ooh, here's something that we're having here at the holiday season. You guys know what this is? Peppermint. Do you hear the puh? There's a lot of puh sounds in that word. Peppermint. All right, here's another fun critter. You guys know what that one is? Can you say pig? I'm sure you said it way before me. There's a pig. Okay, we got a couple more. This is what was at the end of my book that I just read. Penguin had a what? Party. He's a party planner, isn't he? All right, what about this picture? Can we say prince and princess? There we go. I've only got a few more, boys and girls. What P word is this? Paint. You know what I just thought? I should have had purple paint on that picture. Oh, yeah. That would have made a better puh sound. All right. Down here we have a animal called a polar bear. Let's actually stick it up here. Maybe you can see it better. Polar bear. All right. And this is a plant that we often see at Christmas time. This is a poinsettia. Very pretty one. I saved one of my favorite for last, and I'm sure this is one of your favorite P words, especially here in the holiday season. Presents. 
<laughs> now, boys and girls, one thing that I like to do when you have a whole bunch of words that, have, that start with the same letter is try to come up with a sentence that can use some of those. So we could say the penguin and the polar bear did puzzles while eating peppermints. Can you use some of these words to come up with a really cool sentence? What about the prince and princess used their pillow at the party? Maybe they had a pillow fight at the party, okay? <laughs> or what about the pig painted, I don't know, what could he paint? That popcorn container? I don't know, think of something. I bet you can tell somebody that you're in your house right now a really cool sentence using those P words. All right, that's all I have. Miss Kim has another story for us today. <laughs> I think this is my favorite story today. I like penguins and they're fun, but this was just the good story called A Warm Winter. There's a little mouse over here. Look for the little mouse in the story. Little mouse woke up in a shiver one cold winter morning. He sniffed the air with his little nose and stepped out of his nest to find some firewood wood, to warm his family. The forest was very quiet. Piles of snow fell from the trees, making a soft plop, which kept Little Mouse on his toes. Because I think a big plop of snow out of a tree, what do you think? Maybe it could bury the Little Mouse. Little Mouse scrambled all around the forest, grabbing everything he could find among the dried twigs, pine cones, and shrubs. By the time he tied them up in a big pile, he was exhausted. And do you see him down here? Looks to me like he had to rest. So he's laying up against that big pile of shrubs, resting. And you see why he took his string along with him now, don't you? Tied it all around that big bundle. Little Mouse rested a bit, and then he tried to drag the pile of twigs with all his strength. But the load was too heavy for Little Mouse to pull on his own. He decided to find his friend Rabbit and ask her for help. That is an awfully big pile for a little bitty mouse to carry or pool. When Rabbit saw the huge pile, she could not believe her eyes. I am not strong enough to pull this pile alone, she said. We can do it if we join forces, replied Little Mouse. Together they tried to push and pull, but the pile would not budge. I see a crow up here in the tree kind of watching. Hmm. Rabbit had an idea. Let's visit the wise fox and ask to borrow his sled, she said. They hurried to get fox, and when he looked at the pile, he stared at it for several minutes, wiggled his tail, and said, I just fixed my sled. So let's give it a try. They loaded the pile onto the sled, and the three of them tried pulling it together. But no matter how hard they tried, the pile simply would not budge. Suddenly the weather turned bad. The wind shook the trees. The sky became pitch black and a heavy snow began to cover the forest. Waking up Big Bear was the only thing left for the animals to do. They approached his lair and asked him to help them before everything was completely buried. 
Now, how do you think bear's going to respond? This is the time of year bear likes to sleep. He does what we call hibernate. He sleeps through the winter. I don't know. He might be kind of grumpy. Let's see what he does. Oh, there he is. Big Bear agreed to help. He was quite impressed by the size of the pile, but he was very strong. Together, they tugged hard on the sled. It squeaked and creaked a little, but it finally began to slide over the snow. Carefully, they pulled the huge pile of twigs back toward Little Mouse's nest. I'm wondering something. Just how big is a little mouse's nest, anyway? <laughs> I don't know. Is that going to fit? <laughs> then something unexpected happened. The sled bumped against the tree root, buried under the snow. All at once, the twigs and branches tumbled all down to the ground. Wow, what a mess. All that hard work Little Mouse did to make a nice pile. And it's all over the place. The blizzard grew stronger and covered everything with a blanket of snow. The four friends took shelter under the pile and cuddled up tight. Now, that is a big pile that covered up that big bear. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Eventually, the wind subsided. Everything grew quiet again. The storm was finally over. One by one, the animals emerged from their jumbled shelter. Look there. There's the rabbit, the fox, the bear. Do you see the little mouse anywhere yet? Oh, there he is. They decided to split up the twigs and cones little mouse had gathered, and each of them carried them back to their homes and their families, thankful they had all worked together. This was going to be a warm winter for everyone, after all. Now, I like that story. And there's your little mouse with his little pile of twigs. That's probably plenty. <laughs> so, I like that story because it talks about how when we work together, things get done much easier. And that's the way I like it. I like help when I do a job. All right. Well, that's all we have for you today for story time. We hope you have a wonderful day. And have fun in the snow this winter. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.